Long time no see. This is going to be an after action report on Tamiya 35374, which is the Panzer IV Ausfering F. Um, real quickly, I'm just using my old camera, no secondary microphone. We're doing this as white trash as I need to. I just need to get it recorded. I need to kind of ease back into YouTube if you don't mind. So uh, just bear with me on how this is and we'll do our best. So I built this thing um, because I had been failing miserably at any kind of dragon or other stuff I've been trying to do. I did a, well, I tried to do a Jagdpanzer IV uh, L70A with um, Bruce the Model Noob and Panzermeister 36. And I trailed off and screwed a bunch of stuff up. And very, so there's a Firefly I'm doing to celebrate the existence of my buddy Shane Smith. And I screwed up some of that too. So like every time I tried to do anything that wasn't easy, it would uh, fall the hell apart. So I was like, Tamiya stuff, that's the ticket. Uh, so the Panzer IV Ausfering F was what I set my sights on. I saw Jason Champion do it, and I like his stuff in general. I've been I'm watching stuff, and I was like, well, hey, like I'll, I'll do that. So I'll go over this. Obviously, it's not going to be like some kind of dragon challenging something Evan Panzermeister would do where I'm talking about all the photo etch I put on there. There's nothing. I'm just getting back in the swing. But I did it, and it was wonderful. So if you're having miserable times with you know, Tasca or Dragon, I would like to take the opportunity to just, you know, celebrate the simplicity and engineering of, of, of Tamiya. It was fantastic. It was exactly what I needed. Very much enjoyed it. Uh, so we'll go over it real quick like it matters. All right, so uh, they start with the rear stuff. I think it reminded me a lot of the Dragon stuff. Um, these things weren't like these little locking things on the stuff was uh, two pieces instead of like seven, so that's fine. But like other than that, it's incredibly simple. They don't do these as well as Dragon does. So you've got the halves and then the caps, but at least you have the caps. So the seam isn't too bad. Um, and there's no like PE chains for this thing, but it was all, you know, as easy as you would expect it to be. Uh, off to a good start. Yeah, their final drive stuff actually looked pretty good, but you can't see any of it anymore. Suspension, um, I will only comment on that I wish it was all polycap, which I'll get to with the tracks, but it's um, it's fine. Separate uh, wheel caps, which like the old D didn't have. I haven't built a, a modern Panzer IV or like a 90s Panzer IV from Tamiya in like a really long time. So in their steps, we get immediately to the tracks, which I didn't do at this stage, but I did them my way and I'll show you how I did them. Uh, they're magic tracks. <laughs> Amazing, right? You're blown away. Uh, I have a ton of magic tracks because uh, a wonderful guy uh, we call Papa Kilo sent me all of his spares years ago. So I had like a box of Panzer III, IV Magic Tracks. And I did them on this because I will show you. So you can see here, spare tracks, magic tracks. Tracks are magic tracks. The only ones that are not are these three and these bits on the bow because these had some of the holding like hardware in it. And these had clamps that I tried to do in PE from an old dragon kit and screwed up. So um, the hammer stolen holes are not drilled out. They're, they're indents, they're not holes. And I tried to drill them out. All I have is this pin vise with this exact drill bit. It was too big, it broke through them. So I was like, well, guess we ain't doing that. And I, you know, I sat and dealt with it, the idea and I was like, well, screw it. So I just went with those here and here, and that's okay. But I did magic tracks for the rest of them, and frankly, I just don't care. My vision's terrible. I can't see this crap anyway. Um, but the you know little bits of me were there where I was like, you can't do it, you gotta fix it. And then the part of me that's like, just enjoy the process was like, screw it, just glue that crap on there. And I think it's fine. Um, I don't think I'll even remember that that's the case in six months, so... But it's totally fine. But I did Magic Tracks, um, 103 per side, I think, on one side and 102 on the other. Faint sag looks pretty much exactly like the Tamiya ones would have. Hull plates are fine, nothing to report. Now, I don't do... I don't do rolled steel texture, since in my opinion you can't see that at this scale. And I don't redo welds because... I, gee, I'm 43. I don't have that many years left in my life to redo every weld and every dragon kit I have. So I'm not interested in any of that sort of upgrade stuff. 
And you're never going to see me talk about it because I think it's unnecessary and kind of peacocky. But uh, everything was fine. Everything went together correctly. No gaps, no problems. Um, yeah, it was pretty much the most uneventful thing in the world, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, so really, the big, uh, the big thing to discuss, being me, um, would be the tools and tool clamps. And uh, it, it's not so bad. I mean, on Panzer IV, at least the F, specifically this one, um, you have two primary types of clamps. You've got type one, and these are arbitrary names that were not, you know, official, but it's what I've been calling it on here, type one, and what we kind of call type three. And these are primarily Panzer IV specific. This is sort of a German, um, we call it the D-shaped wing nut. And there are multiple sizes of this style of clamp. So I know, I think I've shown it a little bit here. Normally I think there'd be rivets for leather, like this tool would have like a leather U and a leather thing here. Um, this is just, it locks it in, and then when you put it to that gap, it pops open. Simples, right? And I have an original uh, for my S-hook, which was actually, it's an old Panzer IV S-hook clamp. It's got Panzer Gray, it's awesome looking. So you're gonna have this type on tools, and this on tools. Tamiya, and they're uh, improved since I'd seen them last Wisdom, uh, had done the type three, we'll call it, these guys, perfectly well to leave as they are. So you can see on the S-hooks, those look sufficient. Uh, this is a foldable track closing tool, looks fine. You've got your idler spanner guys back there, wire cutters has that as well. Um, they even molded the, the little notches where the wire cutter bakelite knobs go. All that's great, this whole side is like that. Now back here, you've got a type one, and then on this other side, try not to knock the antenna off. On the other side, you've got type ones for the axe, type ones for that. Um, these, the jack on Panzer IV is a modified sort of type three. It's just a step down version of the S hook clamps. And then these spare track ones are a, like basically like a stair step on one side, like a little three notch goes like that. And then just another similar style to the um, S hook clamp. So, uh, you know, these were molded integrally. Later I found out I had some dragons ones of these uh, laying around with the uh, you know, they would have had the hammer stone holes cleared out, but I just roll with it. You know, type one for the shovel is there as well. And so here's what I did with the type ones, because they are sort of like TACOM does. They're indented, but they're not, there's no hole that goes through them. So I had to use that one bit that I have again to try to drill them all out. And if you look, you know, before it gets painted, they look pretty okay, especially with like the human eye and not my magnifiers, because I use those geek goggles. And they look all right. Um, certainly, there's a, whole, there's a whole thing here I gotta get into. So the alternatives were not great. So what I drilled them out because my initial instinct was to be like, well, clearly I need to replace them all with 3D printing or something, right? Because I'm, I'm 3D printing friendly, but Here's what happened. All right, so what we have here is Rosham or Rosham, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, Zavod 3D from Shapeways, and this is T-Rex, my, my boys over there. The first thing I want you to see is a T-Rex Type 1, I think it's Type 1, uh, next to the Tamiya tools we were trying to replace the clamps with. So, okay, let's see if we can get it in shot there. So that's, that's a T-Rex clamp next to the Tamiya tools. It was so small that it would not cover the holes that came with the kit, the keying holes. The tools could not fit through the clamp. And honestly, it just looked a little ridiculous. Now, I am an advisor for T-Rex. When their new set of tool clamps comes out soon, my name is on that box. So they get their data from me. Um, so I'm not complaining that their data is wrong but I'd never broken anything off this, their sprue thing and tried to use it before, at least not on, not on Tamiya. And completely out of the question, I figured out immediately, well, well this is ridiculous. Because you can even see just how small it looks on the fender, even if it was sitting right way up. I was like, well, that, well, maybe you, maybe you can't. Like compared to the way the Tamiya ones are, it doesn't pop off very well. And 
I'll have to do some testing to see kind of how it reads versus photographs, but it looks ridiculously small compared to these Tamiya ones. And especially um, if you look at this guy here, there, the locator hole for the, the tool clamp was actually exactly where the hole in the handle was once I drilled it out. So I, you can't see it anymore because I plugged it, but I had to, I, or I covered it with tracks, but I had to plug this hole with like a piece of uh, stretch sprue because I drilled out the hole and I didn't want light or anything from down there coming through. So then attempt number two was these Russian ones. These guys got great data. They didn't get theirs from me, but they've got good information. And um, none of the tools would fit through there. Uh, same kind of issues. They're a little bit bigger. I don't know if it shows. I'm actually not sure if I have the right type. I think I have the second size type one. And I think these are the equivalent T-Rex. So let me try to get these guys down together. So here is T-Rex with um, Rasham. And you can see the T-Rex clamp is significantly smaller still. Um, but I still couldn't. These would have worked better. And this is the larger size. Although, really, these are more used on Panzer III than on Panzer IV. I still couldn't get the Tamiya tool through that hole. So it was kind of pointless. Like, either I would have cut these off and lined the hull with them and had nothing in them so I could have like an empty tank. I'm trying to get these two in shot together. You can see that it's still significantly smaller than the Tamiya equivalent. This guy's a little higher up, so maybe it doesn't quite look that different, but they're getting closer. Now the closest ones, the closest ones that would have fit were this Zavod guy, and he's just some dude from Shapeways. You can probably already see the, the scale difference between this guy's clamp and the T-Rex clamp. It, it's at least on like a similar footing to the Tamiya size, and the hole is significantly larger than what you could get through the Russian one, although these are much more accurate. This guy's thing is almost like a cartoony thing. It's cartoony looking, but it has a significant size hole that you can jam tools through. And I use these on my Martyr 376, and I've used them before, but they are over scale, but they're usable. So this, these are what I had in, in, in my office, my workshop, if you will. So I, I tried all of these things. Uh, as I told you, half of the tools used the Panzer IV specific Type 3s, and I was like, well, those look great. There's the the tools that came with the kit, and if I were to have replaced all of these with these Zavod ones, which also have risers, by the way, which is, don't get me started on how important that is. You see the little feet that this clamp has? That's at least half to, if not like 70% of uh, Type 1 clamps have these little risers. So um, the ones that, if I were to have removed the locating points and the other things that aren't tool clamps, like uh, if I were to have used a different shovel instead of removing the Tamiya clamp, I would have had to have figured out how to get the shovel to sit exactly where it should be, whereas the kit part's going to have locator pegs and it's going to be lifted exactly the right amount off. So in the end, I just said, screw it, which I did not expect to do. I was just like, this is not worth the effort. And what I came away with was... I have tool clamps I'm about to license to some companies. I think Tancraft already has some to test and I'm working on some deals with other people, but I I think I want them to be larger. Now, Evan, my friend, uh, Panzermeister36, he said MJ Miniatures, which he uses and I don't have, are a little bit larger, like the quality of T-Rex, but they're scaled up to where you can actually fit them on tools. And I think I want to do that, which might seem odd to people that I want to go less accurate uh, but usable. I think it's more important that you can put the tool clamps on the stuff you have easily than it is that the dimensions of the the tool clamp are 100% 35th scale because like this is a type 1 tool clamp. I can barely fit two fingers inside of this. It's freaking tiny. So at scale that's very very small. So in the end, long story short, sorry about that little tirade, um, I just drilled them out and they look pretty okay. And again, I was trying to roll with the experience, and honestly, it was fine. But I, I did have this little, like, day-long thing where I was like, none of these tool clamps that I've been getting sent are in any way going to work for what I'm doing, and I was very surprised by that. Um, yeah, so um, all the type 1s are correct. The handles point in the correct directions. Everything worked out fine. 
I wish Tamiya would figure out a way to have like Dragon's Fidelity of Handle stuff, but honestly these ones that are melded this way with the indent that you drill out are higher quality than like the Dragon ones which almost look like, if you know their, their tool clamp handles are kind of square with like a little hole in the middle and they look a little goofy. Um, but they have various kinds. Uh, so really all that's left to talk about is the turret and um, it's actually comparable to sort of what Dragon had in their Panzer III, like the Ausführung J I built, like the, the famous really good Panzer III kit. Um, hatches have interior detail, breech, catch basket, still has a seam down the middle, that's crap, but uh, the gun is sufficient. I left all the hatches open because maybe I would build that crew that came with it because it's got the, uh, the three guys, you know, Commander and Loader and Gar. I probably won't, but, you know, um, at least that way there's crazy amounts of light that will get in there. If I paint anything in there, you can see. I mean, you can't currently, but trust me, I can. Um, and the gun was went together pretty well. The only thing I really had an issue with whatsoever was the fit of... Uh, the You put this together with plates. Like, there's no root box to it. And it didn't quite fit up in here, and I just kept I kept pressing on it and gluing it more, and it went fine. The turret is made of separate plates; they work fine. There is no interior detail for the hatches, and I really liked what uh, Dragon's turrets. This is their Panzer III J. Like I like having the little these things popped open or these things popped open, and you can see there though there's a seat just like this and a catch basket, so they're very similar ideas. But Dragon still has just a little bit better fidelity in, in like, these little things. But um, it's getting close, and it's nice to have it comparable. Um, I also had an issue with the cupola, where, like, you can see that these... I like these doors to sit open like that. They didn't quite reach, and it's possible that I didn't push this piece down far enough, but, uh, like, I kind of had to glue the hatches almost sitting in the right spot, but not quite because the hinges didn't quite line up like they should. But if the cupola ran too high, well, it's fine. Um, there's also no transparent parts for the cupola. They have like the, the vision block stuff, but it's solid plastic and that sucks. Um, it's pretty good for Tamiya. Again, this is a convalescent build where I'm trying to rebuild my skills after being absent for so long. And so far, so good. It was exactly what I needed. Um, because it went together exactly like I wanted. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about Panzer IV clamp uh, progressions and just Panzer IVs in general. It's kind of my new second, maybe? I don't know. Panzer III and Panzer IV fight for my attention. However, to get to the point here, um, what a lovely vacation from all the problems I've been having because I'm back now, in, in modeling at least, and I've tried to make a trumpeter, um, uh, 15 centimeter, and that's a mess. It's over there. Uh, the the Jagdpanzer 70A, it's a mess. The Firefly is a mess. Everything I did was a mess, and the Tamiya thing was like like a kiss from a supermodel. It was just perfect. Pardon my language. It was wonderful. Um, and I decided, and I told my friends, uh, Hamilcar and, and Panzermeister, I'm like, I'm going to build these for a while because I need practice, I guess. I'm just not ready to jump into these crazy things, so I bought some more Tamiya stuff, modern stuff, the um, the 38T, I got another copy of their Panzer II, and uh, I'm just gonna kind of nurse myself back to health on those. I understand they're not like cutting-edge dragon things that I'm giving you opinions on, but um, I'm just trying to ease back in, because I'm in a situation now where I can model, I'm in a place where I can film again if I need to, um, I do still have a three and a five year old who might barrel in at any second, but uh, I'm coming back. And uh, this thing is freaking wonderful. Um, yeah, I can't stress it enough. There's been some drama lately about how uh, certain people in our community were kind of, you know, smack talking Tamiya about how it doesn't take long enough, it's not complicated enough. Well, I didn't glue anything together for like three years and I need, I need something that is not going to get screwed up or allow me to foolishly screw it up. And it's exactly what I need right now. And I can paint it and do just as well and as, as anything else. I love Dragon. 
Um, there's a closet of dragon kits right next to me, and now there's increasingly three or four Tamiya kits in there, but, you know, it's been a hot topic in our communities, and I think it just depends where you are and what, what, how much time you got to deal with, right? And this put me right back into a spot where I remembered why I loved building stuff, and you, you can still get the dopamine hit of finishing something and, and making a vehicle type come to life in front of you, whether or not it's like at Evan's level of like all all of these PE little nubs and things. Um, I'm just, I was very happy to build it and I'm very glad it existed. And again, uh, it's probably only because of uh, Jason Champion series that I even saw it. All right, so that's pretty much it. I love it. Um, I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be doing inboxes of other stuff. I like doing these. Uh, kind of after I build stuff. Um, I'll probably at least do one inbox just for like old time's sake because everybody always asks me to. But I will do a channel update <laughs> very soon because I want to discuss um, stashes and Shelf of Doom stuff because boy do I have a lot of opinions on that coming back to this. Uh, but yeah, I'll save that for a different video. That's all I got. Uh, this thing's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'll make as much stuff as I can as soon as I can.